Hi, this is Steve Dillon with our next installment of our video blog from Dillon Music. This week we're going to go over keyed brass. Now this is a keyed bugle, but we're not going to go over the keyed bugle today. We're going to go over its cousin, the Ophiclide. Now, on my left here, I have a bass Ophiclide. But before we get to that, I just want to talk about the bass Ophiclide in history. The bass Ophiclide was supposedly invented around 1817 and patented in 1821 in France, but there is some documentation that pushes it back to the 1790s by a Frenchman in England. Don't know if it's true, but this is the Alpha Clyde again. Now, it, you, some of you might say, well, what are these keys? Why does it look so strange? It looks more like a saxophone. Well, that's true, and there are there is some stories that are out there that Adolf Sax, the inventor of the saxophone, when working on one of these, put a woodwind mouthpiece on it and thus started to develop the saxophone. Now, that's a story. Don't know if it's 100% true. These instruments were quite popular in our country and abroad for many, many years. Matter of fact, they really outlived their welcome. They are the base member of the family uh, of brass instruments, and they descended from an instrument called the serpent. The serpent was a very old instrument, a bass instrument that was used for many years, and this instrument descended from it. It gives the bass tone of the, um, the uh, brass section. Uh, various composers wrote for it, Mendelssohn wrote for it, Berlioz wrote for it, Verdi wrote for it, Wagner wrote for it, and various band uh, composers wrote for it in the earlier band era. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures of Alpha Clydes. Uh, one of them that comes out of this book, The Music of the uh, Pictural History of the Civil War Era, Musical Instruments and Military Bands, has a picture of a gentleman named George Wolfer, who is shown playing his Alpha Clyde in 1917, well past the time of the Alpha Clyde. So they were used quite late. Here's a picture of me quite a many years ago at Tuba Christmas in New York playing my Alpha Clyde. So now, that being said, of course, at Dylan Music, we are the only place probably on earth not only to have an Alpha Clyde, but an Alpha Clyde lesson book. This one is from France, dated around 1862. Okay, and it gives a lot of the lessons how an Alpha Clyde player would learn to play the Alpha Clyde. And then it also gives etudes. You notice, it gets around. It's not just an umpa instrument. There's many, many different etudes and uh, lessons for the Alpha Clyde. Now, because none of my staff can play the Alpha Clyde, you get a treat today. You get to hear me play, so uh, bear with me. The sound of the Alpha Clyde, I like to say, is a, somewhat of a cross between a, um, a bassoon and a euphonium. Now, I do use keys. I don't use valves. Keys will be in different combinations. The Alpha Clyde has the same range basically as a euphonium. This Alpha Clyde, which is made by Henri and Martin of Paris, uh, they were in business from 1855 to 1865. This is an 11 key B flat. They made Alpha Clydes in B flat, C, and uh, F. Uh, Quinticlave, that's what the, the higher Alpha Clydes are called. They also made a contrabass Alpha Clyde, which I believe one or two examples still uh, survive. Now, of course, you saw the keys. Here's a music lyre. You had to put your music somewhere. This is called a vocal. Now the vocals could be in a curly Q form or this, the tuning slide form, where I can tune. Now an interesting thing is uh, intonation on the Alpha Clyde varies by what type of mouthpiece you use and the corking of the keys. It's very important, just like a saxophone player, to have your keys corked at the right heights or your, your intonation will be a little bit funky. All right, let me see if I can play something for you. <clears throat> and remember, since I only played at Tuba Christmas, 
Most of the songs I know are Christmas songs. So even though it's July, hey, sing along. We have this one is for sale. It's on our website. Anytime you come in and want to try it, just ask one of the salespeople. They'll bring it down. Like I said, it does use a mouthpiece very similar to a trombone. I hope this has been helpful. Any questions, give us an email. Or uh, uh, if you approve of this, let us know. Until next time, thank you. I'm Steve Dillon.